Welcome to Gu Dao Jing Xing, Walking the Timeless Way, a podcast that digs deeply into the ancient texts of Dao De Jing to uncover its timeless wisdom and apply it to today's chaotic world. I'm David Wang, executive coach. I'm joined by my co-host Ian Felton, a practicing psychotherapist. Hello, hello, Ian. Good morning. Morning. We want to also、uh, welcome our listeners to、uh, join today's discussion.、Uh, today we'll focus on Chapter Seventy-Eight. Yeah, that sounds sounds great. Great. So、um, you know, as always, would you like to uh, uh, take the lead in reading this chapter in its original language? Yes, I will. Will do that now. 天下，莫如若遇水，而攻坚强者，莫之能胜。以其无以易之，若之胜强，柔之上刚，天下。莫不知，莫能行。时以圣人云：“受国之垢，是谓社稷主；受国之不祥，是为天下王。”正言若反。That's very good. That's very good. So、uh, this time I'm going to use、uh, one of the、uh, translation versions from Jia Fu Feng and、uh, Jane English. They are couples.、Mm. Uh, they are couples. They were very active in the, I believe, in the '60s,、um, and they were associated with、uh, Abraham Maslow and.、Uh, Alan Watts,、uh, oh. yeah, there was an institute uh, uh, in uh, somewhere in uh, Big, uh, Big Sur in California. You know the spiritual movement at、mm-hmm. that time. So Jia Fu Feng was actually uh, was teaching uh, one of the faculty members there. So、uh, he and his wife managed to、uh, produce a, a version of Dao De Jing. Cool. Looking、yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Under heaven, nothing is more soft and yielding than water. Yet, for attacking the solid and the strong, nothing is better. It has no equal. The weak can overcome the strong. The supple can overcome the stiff. Under heaven. Everyone knows this, yet no one puts it into practice. Therefore, the sage says, "He who takes upon himself the humiliation of the people is to fit to rule them. He who takes upon himself the country's disasters deserves to be king of the universe." The truth often seems. Paradoxical. Well, you know, this is one of my favorite metaphors in Lao Tzu. Yes, yes. Because, can you share with our listeners why this is so? Well, it's it's just that there's something so magical about water that there we we take it for granted. I mean, we we pour. We open up our faucets, and water pours out into our glass, and we take a few sips and dump the rest down the drain, just kind of mindlessly and without thinking about it, without really thinking about. There is something just so genuinely magical about water. Hmm. 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 Yeah, I remember、uh, throughout、uh, Dao De Jing, there were there are you know just.、Uh, Many re- references of water,、uh, you know this in this chapter obviously, and also 
uh, from previous chapters. Can you share with our listeners uh, why you know this is also one of uh, Laozi's like metaphors? Well, I think Lao Tzu obviously saw the magic of of water as well, mm-hmm. and saw that the that magical quality of water is the the closest tangible thing that we have that we can observe because Taoism is all about observation and um, you know pragmatism and and seeing what we can actually perceive as human beings mm-hmm. and what he saw that that's the closest thing that he could observe to describe what he saw as how the universe worked mm-hmm. he obviously couldn't see the water coming out of the faucet right he probably no. see the water saw the water from the yellow river mm-hmm. yeah and 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 so how how these qualities of water emerge in in life he also saw well that's pretty close to the the qualities of of Tao in mm-hmm. general mm-hmm. 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 yeah yeah um it's also very interesting i uh you know a few days ago in my reading i also picked up uh, two quotes from the West, you know, in the during the Roman Empire. Can I share that with you? And yeah. I thought this is quite interesting because Lao Tzu obviously, as you said, talked some talk, uh, you know, observed and uh, reflected upon something very universal uh, between the East and West. Uh, so the one is actually from uh, you know the famous. Uh, Roman, uh, you know, Stoic philosopher, uh, Seneca. Mm. You know, here's, you know, the quote I saw. What is harder than rock? What is softer than water? Yet hard rocks are hollowed out by soft water. And uh, another poet from also the Roman Empire, the, uh, you know, the uh, Ovid, he said something similar, like dripping water hollows out stone, not through force, but through persistence. So I thought it's very interesting that the people, you know, people just from different parts of the world, just, you know, without any, you know, chance of mm-hmm. talking with one, one uh, with each other, mm-hmm. like, what we are doing now, <laughs> they observe in their own isolation, you know, in terms of, you know, the different civilizations and even different time periods, the same thing. Yeah, there's all of these just genuinely profound observers of life mm-hmm. that have wanted to describe the qualities of of water and seeing how how powerful that softness is yeah 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 can you unpack the qualities water the qualities of water uh especially in the context of Tao Te Ching uh for our listeners yeah I'll give it a shot I think the the primary one is how it will so the nature of water which is it will relentlessly seek to go to the lowest place mm, okay which of course is a metaphor for humility and and with, with Lao Tzu mm-hmm. and that no matter what you you can't change that that nature that mm-hmm. ultimately water is going to seek that that low place that if it's stagnant and there's even the the slightest amount of possibility that it can seek a lower place it it will if you turn it into water vapor 
it's eventually going to coalesce and mm -hmm. fall back to the earth and then it's going to flow to whatever low point it can mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. so that's its nature its nature can't be changed even if you put a put it in a container even if you stop it up no matter how much you try yes you can alter its flow you can do all types of things to change the shape of it but what you can't do is change its nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's the fundamental aspect that i think Lao Tzu really wants us to to embody which is yes we have to adapt to changes in mm -hmm. life which means that we might have to i'm not going to say twist ourselves but but we we do have to adapt to change we have to stay in the present moment and maybe not necessarily act in the world the way that we ideally want to mm -hmm. but maintaining that nature of water which is we're still trying to seek that humble place that low place mm -hmm. so that's where we're trying to flow to so that like the uh as you described the best way perhaps to you know the best way to be true to ourself is actually to be adaptable Right. Those two things seem to be, you know, people say, oh, you know, I don't want to change because I want to be true to myself. Hmm. But that can be, you know, um, problematic because mm -hmm. the more you, you hold on to that fixed self, actually your ability to adapt, to really preserve mm -hmm. that true quality of yourself is reduced because of yeah. a lack of flexibility or you know adaptability yeah i think and what you're saying there is that it, it, it's one of those paradoxes which taoism is full of and i know we're going to get to the last line of this chapter Zhang yep. Yan, Ra Fan, which is that true true words are paradoxical yeah and that's that's a perfect example that you just said which is that when when we refuse to change or be adaptable because we say we're trying to protect our true self, that we can actually prevent ourselves from um, maintaining our, our true selves where mm -hmm. there's something paradoxical, where just like with water, when, when we let ourselves be adaptable, that's how we can actually preserve our nature. Yeah, yeah our uh authenticity right mm -hmm. yeah okay um so let's say a lot of people you know in different times and places observe this notion the nature of water and also how powerful uh you know the the water can 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 be despite its you know uh the appearance appearance of being soft and weak and in this chapter, it's meant like um, it's observed that people know that fact, but you know they don't in their it's not reflected in human behaviors. So I thought it's very interesting because in our world, it seems like the uh, being strong and being being bold and being you know like anything but you know soft or weak. So the, my question is, why is that in the human realm? Well, I mean, we're conditioned creatures. There's um, some amount of programming and hardwiring that we have when, when we're born. So, and that's mm -hmm. really un, undeniable, even though for some strange reason, there's still some people that don't see that. But let me give you an example. I was watching a video of a python, a particular, um, actually it was a boa constrictor, but this particular boa constrictor gives live birth. So it doesn't lay eggs. The, mm -hmm. the 
the baby crawls out live out of the mother. And as soon as this baby crawled out of the mother, it was immediately slithering and coiling and wrapping around the branch. I mean, the second it, it crawled out d doing all that. So it never saw the mother coiling. It never saw the mother slithering. It just had that knowledge baked into it at the mm -hmm. genetic level. And the, the second it came out, it, it had that ability and that knowledge to do that. So there mm -hmm. was no learning. That's just, what it, that's the nature of being this boa constrictor mm -hmm. and then of course there's conditioning after that there's more learning that commences but the point is when when we're born we're kind of like an arrow that's being launched out of a bow we're already heading in a in a certain dir direction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then we're being conditioned so for for humans we're born seeking connection. That's one of the first things that we do. We want to we want to seek connection with a caregiver, mm -hmm. and we kind of know how to to cry to get mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of other capacities, but they haven't really been shaped. But essentially, it's the nature of human beings to seek connection. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's a fund that's just like a snake coiling mm -hmm. and slithering humans immediately seek that connection. So it's, it's once people start getting socialized that, you know, this is what we're talking about, tr um, the traditional masculine and feminine mm. values that men are condition to be fighters and, and warriors, which is part of um, our species seeks to specialize. Mm -hmm. And in, in general, men are bigger, they're more muscular, mm -hmm. and um, they have the ability to um, like throw projectiles. They have a general, uh, I mean, these are generalizations again. You, you mm -hmm. can always find exceptions um, exceptions but we're talking about a curve where if you measure across the population so it just made sense in a world where there was hand-to-hand -hand combat i mean if 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 you acknowledge that we're homo sapiens are are primates which we are mm -hmm. and you look at other primates there's lots of um scientists who have observed primate behavior and and they gather in troops and if one troop invades or gets into another troops territory there will be warfare there will be battle it's violent it's bloody and um generally it's the males that do the the warring while the women are protecting the young ones and um, basically, um, kind of waiting to see the, the outcome. And so it's just a natural extension of that, that it would be the same mm -hmm. for humans that when in, in pre-civilized times, same sort of thing, people are wandering around trying to survive. And when different tribes would encounter each other, there was always that possibility that it would turn to conflict. Mm -hmm. And if, I mean, the, the men would, would battle and, you know, whichever side lost, they're probably going to lose some women to the other tribe and they would take some of the women and maybe even kill some of the children. I mean, that's kind of just the nature of, of primates, which, which we are. So once civilization began, that specialization and conditioning was only going to be amplified. Warfare didn't go away. Warfare mm -hmm. continued. And so there's sort of just this, this natural state of 
primates, which which people are, where the men being bigger and more muscular and more more testosterone, which also makes us more aggressive and more violent. Um, I mean, the male species and primates are they're just more violent. I mean, and that's again, that's that's the nature. Like there is that nature to to things, just like the boa constrictor that comes out slithering and coiling. Mm -hmm. So it's natural that we would be conditioned that way, but nevertheless, Lao Tzu kind of saw, well, hey, that has its limitations, and and actually. If you look at nature as a whole, not just in the context of warfare, which is only one aspect of life, that being softer and and he even said stay closer to the female, mm -hmm. that that had the sort of special power to it, like water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> Which one is more natural or both? Like what, uh, what Lao Tzu proposed and also what is happening in that natural state of the world? Well, it's the yin yang symbol. I mean, he, mm -hmm. that, that's why that symbol has arisen that it's perfectly mm -hmm. balanced. Mm -hmm. There's the female and there's the male. And they complement each other. Mm -hmm. But within the female, there's a little bit of male. And within the male, there's a little bit of female. Just like mm -hmm. there's a little bit of light within the dark and a little bit of dark within the light. To, to kind of symbolize that, that nothing is black and white. That there's these polar energies that, that are necessary to create wholeness. But with any each aspect, there's the aspect of, of the other. Yeah, 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 I see. So even if we are talking about water, sometimes I, in my mind, you know, there's the free flowing water, but the water is the roaring, like, for example, like the big waterfalls, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does that, you know, rep represent just uh, yen also? I, I feel like sometimes uh, you have the very, cons you know, persistently dripping water, like very subtle and very mm -hmm. quiet, right? Mm -hmm. And th over time, you hollow out a stone. So that maybe is the force of ing. But also I see it's not always the expression of the quality of water. It can be stylistically, it can be, you know, like a, with a big sound and really very very harsh, right? So mm -hmm. that also is a reflection of Tao. Yeah, and I mean, there's this, um, what is it, the the grizzly mom metaphor that I think is, is popular in, in American culture that, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you, you make a, a, a mama grizzly bear angry, I mean, yeah. look out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are we making of, like, how, how are we, like, for example, uh, you know, Ro and Ro, uh, as, you know, are mentioned here, like uh, the two key terms in this chapter. Ro means soft, Ro means weak. Uh, the other day, just out of curiosity, you know, I was, um, you know, uh, I, I, I was looking up in the dictionary what really, what weak really means. The first one is no surprising. It's lack of physical strength means raw, right? It means weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the other one, you know, caught, uh, you know, made me think is the, is the lack of the ability to, it's too rigid. It's too rigid. And also it breaks. It has the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, risk of being broken. So that can be raw. So when I thought about it, I thought, oh, that's interesting because that also can reflect a, you know, maybe a paradox paradoxical situation with a person or a thing or something 
that appears to be strong, but it's lack it's lacking its uh, flexibility. That because it's too strong, it breaks. So that also can be, uh, you know, uh, weakness too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it it makes me think of, well, you know, maybe some some leaders who try to appear very strong and yep. you know really in, intense and um but really they don't have uh, enough softness to to endure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly yeah i think the people even talked about you know like uh, cruelty among you know uh you know that kind of excessive uh cruelty it's a reflection of weakness mm -hmm. yeah yeah, for sure. That that what is cruelty? It's it's kind of yang pushed to its extreme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that is going to be brittle and weak. And and we know that that's. I mean, when we think about authoritarian leaders, yeah, they they can be in place for some period of time, but they don't create enduring civilizations. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They might last 50 years or so, and then, um, you know, it's not really sustainable for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In this chapter, I, I think the, they also, Lao Tzu also talked about like leaders, like leaders, uh, I, which I find interesting, but also I think that uh, reminds me of in other chapters, you know, the leaders who are taking the disasters of the world or disaster of a nation. Uh, leaders, you know, those mm. leaders seem to be more like a, like a more like a servant leaders, you know, servant leadership, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to, you know, occupy a powerful position and uh, indulge themselves, but they are taking on the humiliation, you know, of the people, including, you know, maybe criticism, you know, people, you know, from all corners, try to, you know, accuse that leaders, but the, you know, uh, that leader needs to be very re resilient and, uh, you know, to uh, bear those things in order to advance. Yeah. So the, I think that example that you're giving is a, it's a perfect example of uh, Ro Ra that take the ocean, for example, because mm -hmm. that's, that's the other great Taoism metaphor. Yes. If you go to the ocean and stick your hand into it, it's going to let you just stick your hand into the water. It's not going to resist. It's it's going to completely let you do that. If you want to dive down into it, if you throw a big rock into it, it's going to take mm -hmm. it in and it'll sink to the bottom. But um, if if you put this giant shipping um, container ship onto it, it'll hold it up. It'll hold up all, all of this weight and, and let it float on top of it. And, and it, it will take on the burden of holding that boat up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This thing that's just so soft and weak, but it can endure the weight of this giant boat full of all these shipping containers. Yes, yes. What you're saying reminds me of a, uh, you know, very well-known Chinese idiom, "zaixiang du li neng cheng chuan." Essentially, it means you know, within the the belly of a, a prime minister, you can that he has the capacity to lift a whole boat. So, mm -hmm. in other words, the position of a prime minister, you know, is always a very delicate position because you know other people will blame him you know the the emperor won't be satisfied wouldn't be happy so that yeah. person needs to have a capacity to take taking anything you know mm. so mm. like a uh, chen chuan chuan means the boat right mm. so mm. it's just like a big ocean you have to mm. have a ocean wide uh, you know capacity mm -hmm. yeah it seems like that's a a, a 
a perfect example of Rora, where um, um, that Taoist thought has permeated Chinese culture, and and it shows up in that idiom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we think, as always, you know, try to apply this wisdom to the real world, kind of the walking the timeless way. Uh, where in the world today, you think that principle, that Taoist quality, can be, uh, you know, can be practiced or manifested? Well, I think it's it's so necessary right now, especially thinking about outrage culture in the U.S. Mm-hmm. And you know, people are tired of it. I think most people are tired of it, but they're still. I'm not really in those. Like, I'm not on Facebook or Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure it hasn't changed. I'm sure it's still just as full of outraged people. We we know that social media, the psychologists that have sold their souls for for um, in exchange for poisoning America, we know that these kind of sellouts um, who are ruining society for um, for wealth that that they've helped social media companies to polarize us even further that they know that the more outrage in a post, the more likely that it's going to be clicked. And so Mm -hmm. um, not just social media, but media in general knows create outrage in people and they'll click clickbait. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the first place where we can use this quality of just not being so reactionary. Mm -hmm. letting ourselves hear things that we don't agree with that we think are not true, but without going nuts and losing our minds and shouting and screaming and getting Mm -hmm. into arguments and, and being offended and, you know, shouting and yelling. I mean, that's not Taoist at, 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 in the slightest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that's the that's the most important place. You know, here here's another water metaphor. Mm-hmm. Let let it roll like water off your back. Hmm. Mm. So that's one. I would say. Um in our own home so there there's if we go back i forget which chapter it is and and um Tao Te Ching that talks about ultimately if you want to change society first it starts with yourself mm-hmm. and then once once you've worked on yourself then you can change your household mm-hmm. and then if you change the household you can change the community If you can change the community, you can can change the nation that again, that that's where, you know, people ask this question of is Taoism individualistic or communal? And it's like, well, it's both it's, Mm -hmm. it's yin and yang, you know, the individual matters, but the individual matters within the contexts of the community. And so it all matters. It's not either or it's both. And, and so Um, this softness, again, going back to the household, it's really the same kind of thing in our thinking about our relationships. Can I humble myself in my relationships Mm -hmm. so, so that I'm not putting myself first so that, Mm. um, in whatever situation, when I'm relationally positioned to Mm -hmm. someone else, I'm thinking about supporting and sustaining them rather than just thinking about getting something that I need from this person, using them some way or Mm -hmm. selfishly only considering one side of this, my side of the situation. Right. And that's in all relationships. It's not just the ones in our house. It's thinking about that. And in any time we're in relation to someone else practicing Mm -hmm. that, 
how, how can I be like water in this situation? How can I take the humble position? How can I take the lower position and be adaptive and, and also not let my nature be changed by whatever happens in the situation? You know, if, if I, if I let myself get upset and start acting out of anger towards yeah. someone, yeah. well, now, now I've lost control. I'm, I've lost my nature. I'm not being like water anymore. Now I'm being like these brittle, brittle leaders who can't mm -hmm. tolerate any, anything that is triggers their, their ego. And then, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of looked at negatively by everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you think sometimes there's fear, uh, fear of being exploited or being like a taking advantage of if you appear or if you are humble to other people? I, th I feel like sometimes in the society, given the culture we're living in, I, you know, I was wondering why people, more people are more humble. Uh, instead, you know, what I, I'm seeing, like people are more, less humble and they're more, uh, uh, how, how should I say the, well, maybe they're different expressions of not being humble, you know, maybe in a fighting mode, you know, pushing back you know, aggressive, assertive. So all these kind of yan uh, qualities seems to dominate the world at this moment, instead of choosing be, being humble, because I think there's also fear of, you know, other people, you know, no matter whether it's a, your boss, or maybe a manipulative leader or to take advantage of being your being quiet and soft. Yeah. And, and that's one of the perversions of our culture that mm. that's the illusion of individualism. So when we feel like we're going through the world on our own as this individual, like I've got to be this strong individual because it's me against the world. And, you know, our, our culture teaches people that, yeah, that that's the case, that it's this pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You've got to achieve you. You have to succeed like you on your own, like you have to be this great person. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's what we've been taught since, you know, childhood, like you have to be mm -hmm. self-reliant, independent. And mm -hmm. if you don't, uh, there's uh, some uh, you're, you're being humiliated by it there's mm -hmm. a shame in there like yeah. even nowadays like if you cannot like remember i shared with you a uh you know a, a episode like an interview by bbc mm -hmm. with a guy right the, yeah. the guy who was said, suicidal yeah 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 who up said, in montana like, an older white guy like in his 50s yeah yeah he said you know we're living in a world like people only like the winners are respected. Yeah. But people, if you feel like you cannot hold on your own, you cannot protect yourself, you cannot hold on to a job, then mm -hmm. almost like, um, you know, the society are treating you as a non-human or subhuman. Yeah. Pun punishes you. And, and that only happens in this kind of individualistic culture mm -hmm. where in a culture where it really is about a community of people not thinking just about themselves, but how that um, there's a term called a holon, which is basically a, a, a discrete unit that can exist in relationship to other holons to create something bigger. So like the individual within the community would be a holon. Mm -hmm. But then a whole lot of holons combined together to create something bigger, like a community. Right. And so if we thought of ourselves that way, like it's not just me, it, it's me and these other holons coming together to create something bigger. Well, now I can use these Taoist practices to recognize that 
I don't have to be strong. I just need to support and be there for the other whole lines because we're, we're all looking out for each other. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like to transition to that stage, it takes a lot of uh, practice and then, but the first step is to, you have to have a leap of faith in some way mm -hmm. because we have lost it because we've been conditioned to rely on ourselves. Right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trained to think transactionally. So if everything is a transaction and this is mm -hmm. the whole pro this is one of the major problems with America mm. and, and not capitalism, but kind of the commercialism of everything. Mm -hmm. If everything is a transaction, then yeah, I can't be weak because I'm only I'm only going to be as successful as I can be strong within that transaction. If someone is stronger than me in a transaction, um, which could be any interaction, if I'm not strong, I'm going to be dominated and I'm going to be exploited and something's going to be taken from me. That's the mentality that we have in this country where everything's transactional. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. I, I think uh, I remember in uh, you know one of the classes I took, you know, at college at Harvard, they talked about in some uh, tribes, like let's say in uh, you know uh, Indonesia or the Southeast Asia, where they you know they their calcul calculus is more longer term. Like yeah. during this season, maybe I'm uh, you know taking a you know maybe I'm giving more. But maybe later, even several generations later, you know, my child or my grand, grand, great, great grandchildren, grandchildren will benefit from that relational. It's a more relational mindset as a like a maximizing it all like transaction. Yeah, I mean, e even I mean to use pop culture, Game of Thrones, like mm -hmm. these alliances between families, and it's not just about like what's happening in this moment, it's thinking about your, like what you're saying, generations of alliances and thinking about how it works within that context. That again, so e even these um, families are whole lines within these alliances and, and each family is a whole line that then cooperates with each other to create um, bigger uh, alliances now it's messy it's not like it's you know doesn't have some ug ugliness to it mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like human relationships are going to be messy but the point is like you were saying thinking relationally and long term not treating everything like a transaction where the weak one is just going to get exploited and the strong one is just going to take yeah yeah so to kind of summarize our, uh, you know, conversation, I feel like, you know, we started what, with water. So the water demonstrate, uh, demonstrating a lot of the Taoist qualities. Uh, but when you take a step back and look at water, uh, it seems like the water, uh, you know, is definitely not have a human mind as we do, but the water sees itself as a part of a larger whole, right? So then it's willing to take a lower position and and kind of to to be like um, to uh, to be constant in, in that sense by following its own nature. And then it can, you know, act uh, in so um, flexible, adaptable way. So yeah, just it's to, not worried about that. It's not worried about the outcome. It's worried about maintaining its nature. You're right. Definitely, it's not transactional. Maybe mm -hmm. if the water is transactional, uh, you know, maybe there, you know, I, different, you know, scenarios coming out of that transactional mindset. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so let's uh, wrap up our conversation for today, and I hope that our listeners can benefit from this discussion. And I look forward to our uh, next time. Great. Yeah. And, and hopefully if, if any of our listeners are out there that want to join in the discussion, we'd love to hear from you. Come to walkingthetimelessway.com. We have an interact section on there where 
Um, we hope that you will will post on any blog post that we've posted or or just email us or subscribe. We we want you to be part of walking the timeless way as well. So don't hesitate to reach out.